Dear friends in Christ, in his book, The Grip of Grace, Max Licato paints the following picture. You and I, and half a dozen other people, are flying across the country in a chartered plane. All of a sudden, the engine bursts into flames, and the pilot rushes out of the cockpit. He informs us that we are going to crash, and that we need to bail out. Good thing he knows where the parachutes are, because we don't. We're in a panic. He passes them out, gives us a few pointers. As we stand in line, he throws open the door. The first passenger steps up to the door and shouts over the wind, could I make a request? Sure, the pilot says, what is it? Any way I could get a pink parachute? <laughs> the pilot shakes his head in disbelief. Isn't it enough that I gave you a parachute at all? And then he kind of pushes the first passenger out the door. The second one steps to the door. I'm wondering, is there any way you could ensure that I won't get nauseated during the fall? No, but I can assure you that you have a parachute for the fall. Each of us, he writes, comes with a request. Each receives a parachute. Please, Captain, says one, I'm afraid of heights. Could you remove my fear? No, he replies, but I'll give you a parachute. Another pleads for a different strategy. Couldn't you change plans? Let's crash the plane. Maybe we'll survive. The pilot smiles and says, you don't know what you're asking, and gently shoves the fellow out the door. One passenger wants goggles, another wants boots, another wants to wait until the plane is closer to the ground. You don't understand, the pilot shouts at us. I've given you a parachute. That is enough. Lakato writes, only one item is necessary for the jump, and he provides it. He places the strategic tool in our hands. The gift is adequate. But are we content? No. We are restless, anxious, even demanding. And then he concludes, too crazy to be possible? Maybe in a plane with pilots and parachutes, but on earth with people and grace. God hears thousands of appeals per second. Some are legitimate. We too ask God to remove the fear or change the plan. He usually answers with a gentle shove that leaves us airborne and suspended by his grace. I like that story. Because if you're like me, there have been times that I have been just floating out in space, suspended by his grace and nothing else. And there are times, and you've probably experienced it, that the one thing that you want more than anything else is the one thing you don't get. You go to the Lord seeking an open door. You plead with God for healing. You pray and you wait. You pray some more and you wait. You wonder what in the world is going on. You continue to pound on heaven's door, seeking to get Jesus' attention. And there doesn't seem to be an answer. My friends, what if God says no? What if the request that you so urgently make to the Lord, what you so ardently desire is denied. What if God's answer to your prayer is the answer he gave to St. Paul in our text? No. I've given you my grace, and that is enough. My grace is sufficient for you. I was talking to my mom, who suffers from chronic pain. Some of you know that. And she wants to die and go be with the Lord, 
but she also wants the pain to stop. And so she was telling my sister-in-law that she was praying to God for physical relief from her pain, for healing. And then she said, I always say, well, Jesus, if this is your will, please bring it into my life. And my well-meaning, and I do believe that she's very well-meaning, my well-meaning sister-in-law told my mom she should not pray like that because it is God's will for her to be healed. And so she should just claim the healing in faith and not even question if it's God's will. Now, for the record, I love my sister-in-law. But she is so far out in left field She's no longer in the ballpark. And sadly, she's not alone. I mean, who wouldn't want a God that gives us everything we wanted, whatever we wanted? But if he did, he'd be nothing more than a genie in a bottle. And that's not who God is. Our Heavenly Father will not give us everything we want, but He will give us everything we need. In our text, Paul pleads with God three different times to take away this thorn in the flesh that was tormenting Him. And each time, God's answer was the same. No. No, Paul, I am not going to answer your prayer the way that you want me to answer it. But I will give you the parachute. I will give you what you need to get through it. I will give you my grace, and that will be enough. Now, we don't know exactly what Paul's thorn in the flesh was. Some scholars think that it was a physical ailment like malaria or possibly something to do with his eyes. Others think that maybe it was sexual temptation. Still others think that maybe it was opposition from enemies who were trying to prevent him from preaching the gospel. I am convinced that God moved Paul to leave the question of what his thorn was open-ended, so that we might be reminded that God's grace is sufficient for all the thorns of life, including the ones that you and I have to bear from time to time. We have been given God's grace. And whether or not God decides to remove the particular thorns in our lives, We are called to know and to trust that his grace is enough for us so that we can continually to faithfully follow him through this life until the day that we get to see him face to face. We may not know what Paul's thorn was, but we do know that God's grace was more than enough to take care of his need. And we also know that God had a reason for not healing Paul. And in Paul's case, God said, it's because I know you, Paul, and I don't want you to become cocky. You've had these incredible revelations up to paradise. You've had gifts that other people have never had. I don't want it to go to your head. The Lord allowed Paul to carry around his thorn in the flesh to keep him from being puffed up, to keep him from being conceited or holier than thou. God did not want Paul to be so full of himself that it didn't leave room for grace. God would prefer to have his child Paul occasionally limp through life than to perpetually strut through life self-sufficient. And if it took a thorn for God to make his, his point, he loved Paul enough not to pluck it out. And that reminds us that when God says no, there is always a reason, always. 
I don't presume to stand here today and know the answer of why God may not have removed the thorn that you struggle with. But one thing I do know, and I pray that you know as well, is that when God says no to our prayers, he does it as a loving father. And this father always knows best. We may, or he may be using your struggles as a way of purifying your faith so that you cling to him and only to him and nothing else. He may be using your struggles as a way of keeping you hungry for eternity so that you don't get too comfortable here in this world which will one day pass away. He may be using your struggles as a way of reaching other people who are struggling with a similar thorn in the flesh. The bottom line is this. When God says no to our prayers, he has a good reason. And it is in our need, our need, that God's grace shines most brilliantly. As you journey through life, as you encounter thorns of, of living in this fallen and broken world, remember God's grace is the only parachute you really do need. And it is in our times of greatest need that the Father bends down and he whispers in our ears, trust me, trust me. I have proven to you that I love you. I did it when I allowed my son to die on the cross for you so that you could be mine forever. I understand that you don't understand everything I do. You don't see everything that I see. But you do know that I love you, and the cross proves it. That's enough for you to let me be God and for you to keep holding onto my hand. One day, God promises, you will see. One day, it will make perfect sense to you, and you will be amazed at how gracious God was to you to allow you to struggle for a little time because he loves you. But for now, God says to each and every one of us, Trust me, trust me, my grace is enough. My grace is sufficient. In Jesus' name, amen.